Well, greetings again. And uh, this morning we're going to talk about some strategies of retention and different types of uh, some of the different orth orthodontic cases and how you retain them. But the thing is, when you go in to straighten the teeth, you're going to get it looking as best you can. And then you try to put a retainer on there. If you have got got the teeth lined up too far out and you don't have as much tongue pressure as you have cheek and lip pressure, then the teeth will drift in that direction. So they'll drift where the lip pressure is less. And so you have to stay with your attention until the teeth kind of assume their correct position. That's the tongue pressures, same as the lip and cheek pressure, and that's where they stay anyway. So you hold them in retention to that point. Now this old mess of saying, well, I'll take this and wear it for six weeks or six months or however long, you have to really wear good retention until the teeth have gone to a place that they are going to be stable at, and then you can gradually come out of it. So let's look at these cases and see what we have to do here. I'll, uh, now here's a case. This is just the finished thing. We finished it up and we put a wraparound retainer like that. There's nothing crosses over the teeth. I never have anything go over the teeth or you bite on that wire and then it'll move the teeth one way and you take it out and they go the other way. You let teeth erupt into the mouth. When you get finished with what you're doing in your orthodontics, you can have them touch together and you can see daylight between the teeth a lot. You leave them alone for, oh, two or three months and you will have the teeth coming down and they suck into each other and they kind of wear in like valves on a car and they fit tighter as long as you wear your attention while they, the teeth, the final, and it's not the final movement, but it's the final part of your orthodontics. You let the teeth erupt into each other. And this is a problem where you're wearing uh, this Invisalign stuff you got coating over the teeth and you can't tell how they're going to go when they run into each other. They shift and move around until the teeth fit like this. And if you hold it good with a retainer above, and sometimes we use them on the bottom too, or we bond the bottom together down here and let the teeth work out their final position. And the only way to do it is let the teeth run into the teeth. And then the, the V in the, on the top fits between the, the teeth on the bottom have a similar deal like that, you see. And the top teeth come down in here. And that's the way this is. You see these two teeth here, this cuss is coming in that way. So... I wanted to bring that point out in this old idea of wearing these clear uh, acrylic devices. It brought a lot of people in, of adults, into the practice, and you show them what you can do, and sometimes you can wear the end thing, hold it in place, and leave them over a period, period of time. They'll be eating without it, and the teeth will move to some extent, and that's where they end up finishing by taking the thing out and letting the teeth do the final movement. But you put that in, and you got the two layers of material between the teeth, and that's a problem with Invisalign. They, sometimes they don't bring that out to you. But that did bring a lot of patients into the office, and I'd explain how you did it and what you did and how I could do it much quicker 
with the bands and brackets and things. And most of the time, people would do that. Or I did several Invisalign cases, and I ended up using brackets and the wires to finish the case out. So let me look, go and look. But you can see how these teeth met. Now, now here, I got a case and the tooth central ended up shifting when I closed it. And so I wanted to move the central a little bit. I wanted to straighten the root over this way so I have it close in that way. So I put a bracket on the tooth, put a spring on the tooth like this. Now, I had the person put the retainer in and they'll reach down here and hook this wire up and it will certainly move the root of this tooth over in that direction and bring this point up and it'll line up like that. So this is a way you might change a tooth with Invisalign. You could take that tooth off, put it in the right position and then wear the deal and you could do this same thing with the Invisalign. That's possible to do that. But you see we hooked that down and you see how this tooth raised up and now it's lined up with the other teeth. And that's a little trick you might want to do. You can change that or with the, your plastic deals, put it right, come in there and it'll line that tooth up good. Now here we've got that worn and you see these edges are the same. That thing pulled that tooth over. They just had to remember to hook it up when they put the retainer in. <clears throat> Alright, these are just some little gadgets that you can use if you want to do it that way. Now we're, here's a young lady, I think that we did that too. And you can see how it worked. Now after we got it straightened out, we come back and, and redo or grind this acrylic out here and have it where the tooth can move and now you put fresh acrylic in behind this so it will hold it when you take it loose up there this you kinda overcorrect it and wait before you take that thing off until it straightens out better. So here she is later and there it is. And so in her attention I made a little notch in this wire and that holds that tooth up and it ended up like that, straight and good. These are just some little things that you can do and uh, uh, we raised that tooth up and tilted it and then I had to Oh, I did the wire like that to hold it there and then we came in and took it off and put the retainer in. And then here on another case like this we had the tooth drop down lower than the other teeth. So we put little pads under the cuspid teeth well, this is the lateral tooth right here, really. We put the pad under it, and now his arch wire across here would not go down. And we came inside and put a hook in, and I put a hook out here on this wire. You put a little rubber band and pull it up there, and then it'll pull the tooth straight up in that fashion right there. So we cut a little groove in here and put a hook. Now you take a small rubber band, come under that, come over here, and then it'll take that tooth and shove it, raise it up. And here it is after it got the tooth raised where it was going. These are just things that you might do and finish a case up. Now if you wanted to make shells and put it in there correct. You could do this with Invisalign, or we figured out how to do it without, that's before Invisalign was even thought about. 1976. And say so we intrude that tooth in that manner. 
and you put a hook in there, and every time they put that in, that rubber band pushes on that tooth, and it moves it up. There it is later on down the line. So these are just different ways you can do different things with your teeth. Sometimes after you finish a case, a tooth moves out of position, and you can do this uh, with it, or you could, uh, if you had a method of making a one tray and put it in, you could probably put it in place that way. And here it is. In other words, we hook this wire on uh, this and this, and when it pushed this up, it was pulling these teeth down. So you get the same force going. So this tooth was coming down, and these teeth were coming down too, but then we raised this tooth in place. And that's how we finish some of the cases out. This little thing like that comes out. And here the young lady is, and there she is with the thing lined up again. Now here another situation where <coughs> the jaw was moving out down here. So we put a retainer in with a hook on it. We put a acrylic here, you snap some of here, and that's a kind of a class three uh, retention. And this would not, the uh, upper or uh, retainer would not come out. You have to snap it in over this place. It's got a hook here. We bond these teeth together from the, or I have taken them and bonded the, about four on each side, or I have eight teeth bonded together and hook up the cuspid area and wear what we would call class three elastics. And this doesn't let the retainer come down and you bring these teeth out to where the amount of pressure on the inside is the same as the outside. And this was going back wrong and so we added this to the retention and corrected it that way. And that's carried it back with that. And we did finish a lot of cases and showed something like this. You see this acrylic underneath this? You have to snap this wire in over here, and that retainer, it won't come out. You gotta pull this out, and then it's un you can take it out of your mouth. Then you wear this rubber band right here, and it will pull back on this and forward on this and correct and this was a method of doing class two retention and the surgeons will hug your neck because they didn't operate on the top part up here, we'd operate on the bottom part, but the whole thing needed to go forward. So you put this in there and you wear this and it'll bring both upper and lower jaws forward to where the tongue pressure and the lip and cheek pressure is the same. And that uh, saves having to go back and redo the surgery. But we worked around now, and I've got a whole string of these where you take the six year motor on the bottom and you pull these back where you want it, and you put a pin in here, and these can't come back. And we wear elastics off of this up here, and we pull the upper jaw forward and pull this back and that carries that until you get the teeth to their neutral zone and that's a, a good thing you do learn how to retain teeth what you get it's hard to keep sometimes or I can be hook that up and that'll pull the lower teeth back in this direction and upper teeth go in this direction all right here's another a young man that had a problem and it fits together something that's off nearly class one but he's got a deep bite now when you're class one in other words this if this tooth here and this one touches back here that's class one we've got these 
She's going nearly into class one. Let's look on the other side. And it's just uh, not as good, really. It's one-sided. Uh, this bottom tooth should be fitting in something like that. And so it's sticking out further than it should, or, or it's in further than it should. All right, we have the teeth, the upper teeth lined up like this. That's when you start, and you go in and correct that. And so we ended up with the guy who is after he matured a little bit. Now this is before we had these uh, acrylic lining. So we took this model and we cut to there in the middle here and put it together and we took that and made ourselves. We made it, took an impression of that and we made a retainer that fit in there and it's clear and we hooked that up and this is what Invisalign could do for you now. In other words, they took this section right here and it moved it forward and closed that gap up there. And here is wearing that and we pull that in over another wire and it lined that tooth up in pretty good shape with that large wire on the outside. Now when you're bringing something out like that, you don't have this tooth banded. We would wire something here and run the wire over by these other teeth to bring it forward or out when you move the others out. This is a little trick making this thing and you could proceed this and then bring this tooth out kind of line it with that one. You may have to wear it a while, or you, know, you wear it a good old while, and it, it includes on the lingual cusp when you move it out, and then it that brings the buccal cusp out over a long period of time. Now, we take uh, this large wire, we try it to the, uh, uh, the teeth and everything in there, you can pull both of them out at the same time. All right, these are just some little tricks where we line these teeth up with a large wire around there and we spread this out and made it carry these teeth in into place. And over here the midline's almost on and it's got this lined up pretty well in place there. This was back in 1985, I think, when we worked with that. Now we end up like that, and we brought these teeth out that way. Here's another young lady. And, uh, we'll have to look at if she's got a very straight facial profile. You can do a lot with that. And we made her retain her. And before we took these wires off here, we made a retainer and brought these back some to make them match uh, better. And this is back before they had the Invisalign. Now you'd have to come in, you line these teeth up, you'd have to come back and redo this inside of this. You grind that off, put a critic in there and make your retainer go up it makes this fit the new position of the teeth. And this one right here is lined up good. And you can put a mirror under the lip right here. And you look down in that mirror and take your picture. And it'll show these teeth biting into the back of the upper teeth. This is another case. And we must this one looks like she's in, or maybe that's the same one, I'm getting mixed up here. But we pull that back and that's fitting good. So sometimes you have to go back and kind of touch up the work that you did. Now this is using that large wire and we move these teeth out a little bit 
to make them fit better, which we could have done earlier on. And therefore, while we use a flat wire in front, but we don't like them, if the tooth surface, uh, the surface of the tooth is, I'm going to make a little white area here. Now the front tooth will be lined, something like this. And it goes up, and this would be the bone structure. And your wire, if you have this flat wire, it, it's like this. And you put it up there, it touches on one spot. So I'd rather have just a round wire, and it's like this, it'll touch right in the center, and we would have that rather than the flat wire. So I never did use but very little bit of that flat wire like that to bring the teeth back. And of course, if you want to put this wire in a certain spot, you pull it to that spot, and now we would put a little acrylic underneath that right there and every time they go in it would snap it over that and it'll keep this wire right at, at that spot and it'll pull this tooth back if you wanted to tip it to bring this forward a little bit you could do that in your retention all right these are the flat wires but we quit using those and i definitely don't like to go over the occlusal surface with anything. And we never, we got where we never put, you put that in, you're going to bite that wire somewhere and you can see underneath the teeth. When you're wearing a retainer, your teeth move to fit here. And then when you take it out, they fit in the way they had them when you had the case, the thing in your mouth. And so, we just got to where we made nothing but wrap around retainers with no clasp in them and they stay in good. I mean, they got a form of vacuum up there to stay in place. And if we need to keep them in, we bond a little acrylic underneath that if it comes out like that. But they don't wear these flat wire retainers and I never run anything under the occlusion. So this is not the way to make a retainer. And that they bite those wires and a lot of people have their class going over there. The patient bites the wire and the teeth run one way, they take it out and it goes the other direction. So anyway, we went to round the red retainers. Those stay better. If you want it to stay at a certain height, then you put it at that height and go back here and add a little acrylic on the tops of the tooth and it'll snap in at that point and it won't go past that. <coughs> so that's the way we do the retainers and that lets the teeth erupt on each other and the final movement is the teeth coming together where they'll fit like this and they fit real tight but you it takes a few weeks or a month or more to do that <coughs>